Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Tonight I was working on some uh, older Easton aluminum shafts that a co-worker of mine gave to me as an early Christmas present. And as I was stripping off the fletchings, I was trying to think of what I wanted to uh, use as the fletchings, or in this case feathers, uh, on these shafts. And so I figured since I had everything out and I was uh, trying to make some decisions that I would do a quick video on the different types of fletchings that I use and that you might see in the archery industry and uh, talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each different type. Each fletching that's here on my bench has a different purpose and a different use in the world of archery, be it for an indoor paper shoot like Vegas or an outdoor traditional hunting situation. So I want to run down the bench here and talk about everything from blazer veins to traditional cut feathers and uh, talk about you know exactly what I use them for and why I use them for certain situations. So come on over and we can get started. So the first style of fletching that we have here is the standard blazer vein. Uh, blazer veins are made by Boning, which is the company along with Easton. Uh, here up at the top we have an Easton Axis arrow uh, that has blazer veins on it. This one here is a Carbon Express Wolverine. These are not blazer veins, although they are very similar to it. Uh, down here we actually have a Vantech vein, or a Vantech vein, um, and that looks like a blazer vein, but it's not quite. And then this one here is a, a Tiger Stripe blazer vein. Going next down the line, we have a Fusion X vein. Uh, this is a three inch vein. It's a lot uh, similar to a blazer vein, except that this one is a shield cut, which you can see on the back, it has that, uh, that ridge cut out of it, compared to a blazer vein, which is just parabolic, that's the name for that, and just rounded on the back end. And last but not least, we have Old Faithful, which in this case are five inch right uh, wing, and in this case put on with a right helical feather uh, on this uh, gold tip Expedition Hunter arrow. In order to talk about these different types of fletchings, I'm going to go in chronological order, meaning I'm going to start with the very traditional feathers, move up to the secondary, uh, which would be something like uh, these older, uh, longer uh, plastic veins like you see on these aluminum arrows, or like the uh, Fusion X vein here that I have on this uh, Easton uh, arrow here, and then I'm going to move into the most modern, which is blazer veins. Just like the individual birds that these feathers come from, each feather is unique. So unlike something that uh, comes from a mold or a press, like a Fusion X vein or a blazer vein, each feather can be a little bit different in how it's cut and dyed and shaped to be put on the shaft. Feathers can come in all different shapes and sizes. I have an older aluminum shaft for when I used to competitively target shoot. These are uh, two inch black uh, feathers here. This is for, uh, this orange one is for my hunting recurve situation. These are five inch right wing parabolic feathers. And these are, an, uh, this is an older um, small diameter shaft that I used to shoot for, uh, for hunting purposes. These are four inch feathers. If you want to weigh pros versus cons of feathers over like a plastic molded vein, feathers are lighter, therefore making the front of center mast go from the back end of the arrow closer to the front end of the arrow, which is exactly what you want in your shaft. As well as being lighter, they're also known because of their larger rib surface area that they do cause a little bit more drag and therefore can stabilize the arrow a little bit better with a smaller feather. Also, if you're a traditional shooter and you shoot off the shelf of a recurve, longbow, or flat bow, you need to shoot a feathered arrow. The reason why you need to shoot a feathered arrow off of a shelf bow, like a uh, long bow or a self bow or a flat bow or a recurve, is that when the arrow goes to pass over the riser, because it's not elevated, because it's not an arrest, when it goes to pass over the riser, that arrow actually folds down and it collapses on itself, right? And has the ability to slide over the riser. If you try to do that with something like a blazer vein or a Fusion X vein, what happens is the air will actually get there and because it does not flex, it will actually lift and it will actually vault itself off the riser, kicking it this way and that and making the arrow and your setup very inaccurate and making you very frustrated as the archer behind the bow. Downsides of shooting arrows, um, having taken them outdoors and having had them in hunting situations, they do lose their effectiveness when they are wet. So that is something you have to keep in mind. Um, another thing is too, is that they will, and you can kind of see it on this arrow, is that they do have a wear and tear. They do have a shelf life. Um, they can't be shot and shot and shot forever. Just like a bird, when its feathers start to fall apart and it molts its feathers, same thing's true with a feather fledged shaft. You're gonna have to strip them and replace them when they do get Get worn down over time. Moving up in terms of the newest chronologically, you come to a longer plastic vein, which um, when it first was introduced into the industry was thought that you need that long plastic vein, just like you need a long uh, feather, to stabilize a heavy arrow, particularly in a hunting situation. We have now found out that that's not exactly true. You don't need this long... Huh 
really unsightly in some cases uh, plastic vein in order to stabilize a, a, an arrow properly for good downrange flight. But they are still a very prevalent uh, fletching that is used on the market. Crossbow shooters, you would probably recognize something like these. Um, I'm kind of fond of the shield cut look, hence why I went with the Fusion X veins uh, for these arrows. Um, they have a little uh, notch or groove cut in the back, and um, it kind of um, harkens to the feather cuts, uh, where you can have things like a raptor cut or a shield cut or a parabolic or a, or a blazer cut um, with feathers. So um, it's more of a style um, than it is actually effectiveness. Um, I find that I can pattern and shoot a 5 inch plastic vein or a 3 inch plastic vein like these just as well as I can a blazer or a 5 inch feather. Um, but it's all a matter of preference I think when you get to these. Um, you'll see these like I said on, on more of the uh, older aluminum shafts um, and uh, today's crossbow bolts but they can still be used for a compound very effectively. If you go into your local sporting goods store you're most likely going to see arrows fletched like this with either blazer veins or some sort of of knockoff uh, uh, style as well. Blazer veins really when they were introduced revolutionized how we archers fletch our arrows and think about stability in terms of long range arrow flight. In terms of its advantages it goes back to me talking about how feathers are lighter than plastic veins. Because you don't need a five inch vein and this is really only a two inch blazer vein you get the same amount of stability out of this two inch vein as you do a five inch vein and you just cut the weight of that vein in half. So almost it's almost comparable to this five inch feather that I have right next to me. Um, so that's a humongous advantage that blazer veins came, uh, came across when they first were introduced onto the market. Also, and I can say this from personal experience, I've put blazer veins through the ringer. I've drilled them through trees and bushes and animals and rocks and they still stay glued on as tight as can be. So in terms of their durability, they are by far the most durable vein, I think, that is uh, widely agreed across the industry, but definitely my own personal experience. So if you're questioning which one do you pick and which one do you shoot, well, if you don't make your own arrows, you're probably most likely going to be stuck with some sort of feather if you're going to shoot a traditional bow, like a Sam McSage or a Bear Montana longbow. Um, you're pretty much stuck on the feathers. Um, but if you're going to buy, you know, arrows at local Walmart or Dick Sporting Goods, Field and Stream, something like that, you're most likely going to get something uh, with blazers. Um, if you're shooting a crossbow, you'll most likely get something that has that longer plastic vein. So I hope you're able to be better informed and maybe make a decision on uh, what style of uh, feather or fletching you're going to use for your next uh, setup. I uh, hope you're able to make a color choice. I can tell you from personal experience, and that's why I own so many different colors. It's kind of hard. Uh, this year I'm rocking Eastern Axis arrows with the factory crest and two, uh, uh, two um, green veins and one white vein for the offset. And uh, I think it looks pretty good, but next year I'll probably pick something different. And that's the, uh, that's the conundrum that we arrow builders have. But I hope that you're able to get out and enjoy the sport of arrow making if you so choose. Enjoy the sport of archery and archery hunting. Enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.